tell you what that is. The ankle part, oh man, I'm not that flexible, ow. Hey everyone, my name is Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty. Welcome to episode 76 of the Love and Stitches podcast. Today is Tuesday, August 18th, 2020, and it's a nice hot day here in North Texas where I live just outside of Dallas. It has been really, really hot, like crazy. I I haven't lived here for too many summers because before I got married, I always went back home to Tennessee for the summer and it's hot and humid there, but the temperature gets really high here and it got to like 107, 108 last week, which is crazy. I don't think I've ever been here when it's been that hot, but it didn't last for long and now it's just a regular old like 96, 98 degrees kind of a day. Anyway, I have lots to show you this week. So yeah, let's just dive right in. The first thing I wanna talk about is my headband. I love this headband so much. My friend Carolyn sent this to me. She has an Etsy shop. It's called um, Pensive Pixie. And now that I'm saying that, I don't think I've ever heard that word said aloud. So I think it's pensive, right? <laughs> I don't know. But Pensive Pixie, she makes all things for fandoms like Disney, Star Wars, Harry Potter, all kinds of stuff. She makes gorgeous um, ears like to wear to the Disney parks. She, I don't think she has any of those in her shop currently, but she's making a ton. You've gotta go follow her over on Instagram. I'll put her handle down at the bottom. But she sent me some headbands. I have some other ones too. I think I'll save them to show you later, but this is the Hufflepuff one and she has all of the different houses in her shop right now. So I'll have her shop linked in the description, but they are just a uh, it's a hard headband, which I was kind of wary about because I don't I don't have any other hard headbands because I have a really tiny head and so usually they don't fit me, but this actually fits really well and it's stretchy, so I think it will be pretty universal, at least for like a, a woman's head. Um, and they're really comfortable. Like I'm super surprised. Um, it's just got like jersey material, the cutest little, I've learned that these are called top knots. That's what the cool kids say. <laughs> But they're so cute. So I've got my adorable Hufflepuff one. I've been wearing it all day. It is 2.28 and I've been up since 5 a.m. And I, I adjust it every once in a while because like my hair kind of falls and stuff, but it's been comfortable. And so I'm so excited because now I can be cute <laughs> along with everybody else in my adorable headband. So thank you, Carolyn, for the headband. Go check out her shop. Go get yourself a cute little top knot. They're adorable. Um, but yeah, so I just had to wear this today. I was so, so excited. So that's my handmade outfit for the day because it's too hot to wear anything else. Um, and I actually have some finished objects. So let's talk about that. But first I need a sip of tea. I'm drinking tea. You know, in the winter time, I like to talk about my tea. Well, this tea is from Sonic. I don't know if you've heard of it before. I got it two days ago and I forgot to drink it when I got it, so I put it in the refrigerator. It's been in the refrigerator the entire time, so don't worry. It's unsweet tea, and I'm drinking it today. That's what's happening here. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about finished objects. So I have a pair of finished socks that I just finished this morning, and I finished them up during a meeting, and then I, it was a small meeting with only four people, people on my team, and so I was like, all right guys, I just finished something. You're gonna come, well actually I didn't even say that. I'm like, you guys are gonna come upstairs with me, okay? And I like put myself on mute, walked up the stairs with my computer, like still in the meeting, and put these socks into a tub to block. And then I set them outside for 30 minutes on each side because the sun here in my backyard is so harsh this time of day. I didn't want to leave them out for very long in fear that the color would bleach, which has happened to me before. So 30 minutes each side, and they are pretty much all the way dry. They're maybe a little damp. I'll leave them for the rest of the day. But this is um, mustache yarns, and I actually think I had, no, that's not the right one. I need to take this one out because that's my Harry Potter ones that I did a long time ago. Uh, here we go. I have a lot of old stuff in there. Mustache yarns, 
local Texas. I think she's in San Antonio. And the colorway is Jelly Belly. And these socks, taking off that label now, these socks are so much fun. They're so pretty. I actually started these back in May and I'm just now finishing them, which is pretty sad. I can't remember when I did the first sock, if I finished it maybe in June, but it took me a while to start the second one. I did a lot of the second one in the past two weeks. So feeling pretty good about that. Two matching socks. And if you are looking for tips on how to match your self-striping socks. I did a little Instagram video, so I'll make sure to link that in the description box. It's not on YouTube, it's on Instagram with just some different tips. It's a really quick video, so I'll link that. But yeah, so all done. I These are for me, they're 60 stitches. I did them from the toe up. I did a fish lips kiss heel and a contrast color. And then for the ribbing, I did, I don't know why, like I really have no clue. Uh, usually I pick ribbing on my socks like based on what I'm just feeling that day and I did a two by two twisted rib. Who knows? I have no idea. That's what I ended up doing. So they're a nice, for me, pretty long leg, but I wanted to get um, like a full uh, stripe in there. I guess I decided not to do that last stripe. That would have been too tall. Who knows? I don't know. So yeah, those are my Jelly Belly socks. So it's really nice to have a pair of finished socks. Later on, I'm gonna go over all of my unfinished whips that I currently have, which is not like, it's not like 20 whips, it's like maybe five, but everything that I wanna finish up before September starts, because for me, September, I wanna start like a fresh month with a fresh pair of socks, because I haven't done that in a long time, and some new projects. So anyway, we'll get to that, but it's good to have one thing finished so I can check that off my list. I think I had maybe I said this last week, like four pairs of socks that had been started without a pair. Now I added another one. Anyway, so we'll go over that later. And I have a half finished object because I finished my sock week sock. So I will talk more about wrapping up sock week later on, but thank you guys if you participated in sock week, if you watched the going ons of sock week, if you're not a sock maker and just everything. It was such a fun, week it was really really cool and it's just fun to see like make-alongs and the community really grow so this was my sock week sock i haven't blocked it yet because i'm gonna wait until i do the other one to block it but i think i must have been here last week maybe i don't know but i am all done with it this is a sock for my sister it is from the cuff down and I did an afterthought heel. So I wanted to use just the self-striping yarn. And let me tell you about that too. Um, it's Malia Made It. Sorry, this is rude of me. I'm trying not to let, there's the prizes that I need to ship off here in the next couple days. Um, I do have a Malia Made It thing. Okay, this is from Malia Made It and it is her Shark and the Water color, which was an exclusive color for Sock Week 2020. And it is a really fun self-striping. And I wanted to do the entire sock with just the self-striping because I didn't have a contrast, anything left of the contrast color because I've already made one pair of socks from this skein. So that's why you see that the ribbing is really short because I just did it in one stripe until I got to the next color. And then I did two stripes for the um, cuff. It's not really a cuff because these are super shorty socks. And then I did some waist yarn, did the whole leg, I mean, foot, toe, and then I came back and did the afterthought heel. So it's really cool to do an afterthought heel when you're using self-striping yarn, because if you do a short row heel, you stop working in rounds and you start working back and forth, and that completely throws off your stripes. But if you do an afterthought heel, you've picked up stitches all the way around and you can work in the round, and so you get like a kind of a bullseye effect. And I learned that from Susan B. Anderson's pattern smooth operator, which I definitely recommend as a first sock pattern, a vanilla sock pattern. So I think it turned out great, but these are for my sister. I'll give them to her Christmas time. I did 60 stitches and for her 74 rounds, I think. She has a larger foot than me and then she likes shorty socks. So I already um, cast on the second sock because I wanted to finish up this one and weave in all the ends. And I don't like to weave in the ends until I've started the second sock because, especially on self-striping, because then I know that they match. So like I'd left the end up here at the top to see how much green I had left after I did the cast on. And so when I did this one, I made sure that it matched and it did. So 
So now I can carry on. I've done like one and a half rows, rounds. So this is something that I can be working on now over the next uh, little while, trying to finish this one up in August because again, I'm trying to finish lots of projects in August so I can start new ones for September. So half finished object, the next one is cast on and we'll see, Ugh, I feel like I'm really whistly today. Mm? We'll see what I can finish before next week. All right, I have a couple of other whips that I have worked on this week. And one of them is a, no, it's not new, because you guys saw the beginning of it last week, but I did have to, I think, take it out and start it again. My crocheted sock. <laughs> I'm so excited about this. So this is a crocheted sock, obviously, I just said that. And the pattern is my first, my first crochet toe up sock by Ron Strong for Marley Bird. And genuinely, this is my first crocheted sock. It's not my first attempt, but it's the first one that's gonna be done and I'm so excited about it. Again, I'm using Malia's yarn. This time I'm using a different base. It's actually the tag I showed you earlier. So the base is the Sparkle sock set. So instead of having 75-25, it's 70-25 and then 5% Stellina. And it's just got like a different feel and look to it. So it's a, it's a great base, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. So this is a toe-up crocheted sock. I started with the contrast color and then um, worked through to the heel, which I was also able to put in in a contrast color. So I really wasn't sure like how this was gonna happen. I didn't know, I really don't know the structure of crocheted socks. I believe there are many different ways to do this, but this one is very much like a short row heel. So you stop and you start working back and forth and you put in uh, like a heel cup and then you start doing short rows basically basically that's what it is and I didn't do it exactly right I ended up with like a, an extra stitch and I was like Meh, I'm just gonna do a decrease and stuff so these are not perfect in any way but they are turning out a lot better than my first attempt several years ago at crocheted socks so I'm proud of myself for that and I think they're looking pretty good so I up here I've just started again with the contrast color because I am about to go into the ribbing and then the sock will be done. I'm, I'm just, they're so incredibly fast. I do have a marker here from something, I can't remember, but I think I did end up completely tearing it out and starting it over from last week. Not that I had very much last week, but I think that's what I did. So let me see if I can put it on real quick for you and then I'll tell you without, I know I can't say that much yet because I haven't, um, actually worn them around yet, but just some initial observations of crocheted sock versus knitted sock. All right, I'm gonna hold my foot up here for you. It's looking pretty good, right? Now this, I'm gonna take it off and I'll tell you what that is. The ankle part, oh man, I'm not that flexible, ow. The ankle part is a little loose on my ankles, but I'm not really like worried about that. That's why we're about to get into some ribbing. So let me take it off again. I'm glad I put on shorts before I did this. I was wearing jeans <laughs> earlier and that would not have happened. Okay, so initial thoughts, crochet sock versus knitted sock. Crochet and knitting are both wonderful crafts, but we know that the nature of the stitches are just different, the construction are different, and they lend themselves towards different things. So you can see that putting that sock on just stretched this yarn out and it's staying stretched out. It's not going back in like knitting like ribbing. So that is something I'm gonna be really paying attention to when I actually wear these and put them on. It's, it's, it's really interesting. The foot seems to do okay, actually. It's just not, it's not like knitting. Um, as far as ease of making them, I feel like they're really similar because you have to pay attention when you do the toe, when you do like the cast on part and the increases. And then this whole part, you just get to cruise, which is what I love about socks. Had to pay attention here. And then again on the leg, just cruising, the ribbing, it's gonna be real easy. For me now, I used to not know how to do it, but now, now I do. So I feel like that is all very, very comparable. Um, when it comes to being able to try it on, this is really easy, you can try them on. It's um, not very thick, like it's not as thick as I thought. Of course it's a little thicker than knitting, but not that thick. I honestly think I could wear these in shoes. Now this is a fingering weight yarn, I actually have it in a cake in one of my Yarn Cozy Lights. Um, but I don't know, they're actually a lot more similar 
than I thought. So I feel like I should have given crochet socks more of a chance years ago, and now I'm trying them again. I don't think they're going to replace knitted socks for me because I can't crochet without looking, and I can knit without looking. It just makes them the perfect project to take around with me. And I don't think the structure of crochet socks is going to lend itself to as much wearability as knitting, but again, I don't know that for sure. So I'm gonna have to test that out and let you guys know. Um, but are these comfortable? Absolutely. I think I would definitely wear them around the house. They're not too chunky and thick. Um, I also don't know if I have like a tight enough gauge, like as tight as I'm supposed to, but this is the smallest crochet hook I have. So <laughs> it's what we have to go with. <laughs> Anyway, that's probably enough about these crocheted socks, but I know a lot of you on Instagram were saying, oh my gosh, that's actually looks like a lot more like, obviously it looks like crochet, but it's a lot more like a knit sock than I thought. Maybe I'll give it a try, like I'm a crocheter. So I would encourage you, give it a try. The pattern I'm using again is Ron Strong, my first crochet toe up sock. It's been very easy to follow. And then I did see, um, because there were lots of people making crocheted socks, in this week's or in this year's sock week and I saw people using um, you know what I'm gonna have to go back and look and see what designers they were using because I did see several very gorgeous crocheted sock patterns so anyway crocheted sock I should finish this one here very soon because I'm just on the ribbing and then I can start the next one so ideally if I could finish my sock week socks within the next week that would be like super ideal. Oh, and also I did finish this one on Sunday. I did not finish this one clearly. So I made one of my sock week goals, but that's okay. I wasn't competing anyway. <laughs> I was mostly just competing with myself. So now I will finish it up. Um, I did, I think I got to like right here, just past the heel on Sunday, which is not bad. Anyway, enough about these crocheted socks. Let's talk about my final whip before we go into all the things I want to finish before August. I am struggling to talk today more than usual because, well, I'm going to blame my lip. I have bit it about three different times really, really hard and gotten those horrible like little ulcers or canker sores, whatever you want to call them. And then, you know, it makes your lip swell and then it sticks out and you bite it again. I don't know why that always happens to me. I guess I just like talk and chew and it's usually when I'm eating something and I'm just like, oh, eat my own lip, I don't know. Enough about that, that's my excuse. <laughs> that's my excuse for what, why I sound different this week. Um, okay, one more whip that I have put some time into, and I haven't been good about marking this one with a progress keeper, so I don't really know where I was last week. But I am making the Incendiary Tank by Stephanie Aaron. I do think I had this piece done last week, which is either the front or back, they're the same. Um, and I am experimenting with how to make it not so deep in the front and the sides. So I've done that for the front, but again, I won't know until I complete the entire top piece and put it on. So since last week, I've made two more of these triangle panels. I did this one pretty quickly, and then I was working on this one last night, and I was all ready, oh no wait, other way around. <laughs> Finished this one, I was working on this one last night. I was ready to put them together, and I realized I had made a mistake somewhere here. So I need to go back and figure this out. It was too late last night to figure it out. Go back and figure out this piece and then I can connect them, whichever way they go. And then I can connect all of them and actually try it on. Now, once I get to that point, should be pretty fast because now I can just crochet round and round and round and make the body of this, do some increasing for my hips <laughs> and it will be really really great i don't know why i'm having so much trouble i don't think it's because of um the difficulty of the pattern because it's not difficult i think it's because i'm changing things and i'm not marking my notes very well in the pattern itself <laughs> and that's what's making it hard for me to replicate what i've done so essentially if you want to try this yourself i have um made the rate of increasing different by shortening the number of, uh, in, I'm sorry, increasing. I'm sh I've shortened the number of rows where I've increased the very first increase. And then I've also shortened where I've done the second increase where they increase out on both sides. And in doing that, it's made it shallower in the front. And I'm hoping it will work out great, but I don't know. And this yarn, I didn't even talk about that. 
I believe it's Madeline Tosh um, Merino Light, and I don't remember the color, but I'll put it on the screen. I might have gotten rid of the labels on this a long time ago when I finished another sweater, and then I, I have ripped it out since. So I feel like this one is already going better than the first one. <laughs> I really hope so. I hope it turns into something that I'll really like. And I'm definitely planning to do the ruffle on this sweater. I'm really excited for that. So I want to get this. I don't think I'm going to get this one done by the end of August, but I would like to get the top completed so that I can just work on it, you know, and not have to think too much about it um, in the next week or two. So that's all of the whips that I've put some work into this week, but I do have a few more things to show you. So come September 1st, it's gonna be all about fall for me. I'm ready to start some fall makes. Like I, I don't know, it's not gonna be cold here for a long, long time, but I am ready. I also need to get myself motivated to get back into some designs that I have started. And the first one is my crocheted yarn cozy. So I don't think, did I do this since last week? Maybe this is another whip. So I started another crocheted yarn cozy. This is with Molly Klein Design yarn. This was her sock week colorway. Since I um, didn't have, since I'd already picked out a sock with Malia's yarn and then I wanted to use this too, I decided to start a crocheted yarn cozy. So basically I just have the base. That doesn't really show you much. This is what it looks like. Just the plain, the plain ones. You can see I've got the bottom part done. Now I need to work on the walls. And then it's got this amazing crocheted I-cord edging. And I have another one somewhere that has ribbing, but I've lost it. <laughs> and I haven't truly lost it. I think it's just upstairs. I keep like a little basket upstairs of knitting and crochet. So I need to work on that too. And then this is the DK weight version. It's so quick. So what I really need to do is buckle down and finish these things so that I can get this pattern out to you guys by the end of September. That is my goal. Um, so I've said it now, hold me to it. I really need to work on it. Pattern design has been something that I really, really love doing, but with YouTube and with starting a second channel and with going back to work, it has really fallen by the wayside and I don't want that to happen. So hold me to it. Ask me about that crocheted yarn cozy. You guys are great at encouraging me and I want to get that to you guys by the end of September. Now I have some other things I want to finish by the end of August so that in September I can do more projects. And I think besides those two socks, so I want to finish second of this sock, second of the crocheted sock, get my tank to some, ugh, get my tank <laughs> to where it's easy to work on. And then I also want to do my second sock for this one. So this you probably haven't seen in a while, been a few weeks. This is my Hufflepuff helical sock. And I'm using two different yarns from my advent calendars from the past two years. And then I have a contrast color. I don't know what yarn that is. So I need to get that cast on and I'm going to film a little tutorial to show you guys how I got it started and what I did for helical. Hopefully I can remember since I did that sock a little while ago. So I wanna finish that by the end of August if possible. What is the date today, 18th? I need to get started, don't I? And then I think there was one other thing, was there? No, that's it, because I finished those other socks today. So three socks, knit, crochet, and then the helical one to knit, and then work on my crocheted cozies. Oh, that's not bad. I must be forgetting something, because I feel like that's less than I thought I had to work on. Anyway, wrapping up some projects here in August. So hopefully I'll have a lot to show you again next week because I had a lot to show you today, finally, yay. I'm trying to take more time to relax, knit and crochet where I can and not just hustle all the time. I have a handful of questions this week over on the Ravelry thread. So if you ever have any questions for me, feel free, feel free <laughs> to throw them into the Ravelry thread. It's called Ask Me, it's pinned to the top and yeah, you can ask me there or you can ask me here on YouTube if you want me to answer it on the podcast happy to do so. The first question is from Knit and Not 10. Um, and this person says, hi, I'm a fan of your podcast on YouTube. I am new to Ravelry and I'm learning as I go. Do you have any advice for someone who is new to the platform and industry? And then they've got, got another question, but I'll come back to that. Okay. So any advice? Oh man. So that's a pretty broad question. So 
If you are just new to Ravelry, it's your first time, you're a new knitter or crocheter, I would say spend some time exploring. I think there might be some tutorials on, like I think there's some threads on Ravelry. Ravelry is really not that intuitive, so you do have to explore and play. Um, I think I would start by searching for patterns and using all of those filters on the side. You can filter by cost, you can filter by knit and crochet, by type of yarn. I would just play with that for a little bit. And then I would also, I think the other thing that's the most useful for me about Ravelry is keeping track of my projects there. So add a project, when you start something new, take a picture of the yarn and put it on there. And you can have notes, you can keep track of like the needle size, the yarn you're using and all of that. I found it immensely useful when I've done other projects in the future to be able to go back and look at old projects and compare. That's been super, super helpful. And then as far as if you're new to the industry, I guess my question is, what are you wanting to do in the industry? Are you wanting to design patterns? Are you wanting to, I don't know, start a YouTube channel? <laughs> what, what is it that you want to know? Um, but with anything like, I would just say, make a plan <laughs> and just get started and show up and be consistent. I know that's like the most vague advice ever, but that is seriously what makes things happen. So make a plan, show up and be consistent and it will happen for you or you will find out that you are supposed to go down another path. Um, but there's one more question on here. Sorry, my mic is being silly. What are you doing? Okay. Um, the other question was a non-yarn related question. Um, I'm still in middle school and I'm an audio learner and I find it hard reading and studying, though my grades are good. I know I can't live like that forever. Any tips for that? Okay, so maybe you're thinking, because I'm a teacher, I will know the answer to this question, so I'm gonna do my best. So if you don't know, I am a, an elementary school teacher. I um, teach reading, I'm a reading specialist, and I teach dyslexia, and yeah, but I have been out of school for six years, I think. I've been out of college for six years, um, and so it's been a while since I've studied. But I will say that I, when I was in school, I was, if I can say so, a good student because I wasn't naturally inclined towards any subjects really. The only subject that really came to me intuitively was psychology. And that's not very useful in high school. <laughs> I will just say that. Um, so I was a pretty good studier because I had to be in order to get good grades. Um, but I do feel like I didn't learn to really study until I got into college. Maybe you can relate to that if you are someone who is in college or have been through college. It's the first time that you really have to do it yourself. Um, so I don't know. I think I kind of approach studying the same way that I approach like knitting in a way when I want to get something done. I would make an outline. I need to like read chapters like 10, 11, 12 or something like that. Or I need to study the content of chapter 10 and I need to make uh, vocabulary cards. I need to like write a summary on, I don't know. I'm just making stuff up now. Like I said, it's been a really long time, but I would make a list basically of what you need to do to study and then from there you can make a plan. Like I'll do this on this day, this on the next day, and then give yourself a time limit and do it. Like I'm gonna work on this for an hour, do what you can. If, it, if you need another hour, then you can say, well, here is when I'm gonna do it next. And always when you're doing things like that, reward yourself uh, with, I don't know, time to do something else like knitting <laughs> or I don't know. I think that if you give yourself like small um, treats that, that, that that's 100% okay. Like I will uh, say I'm gonna work on something for an hour and then I'm like, all right, now I can have a few M&Ms. I think that that's totally fine. Um, oh yeah, but related to knitting, that's exactly what I like to do for like knitting and crochet is I'll say, okay, here's what needs to get done. I need to knit a, a body, I need to knit a sleeve, I need to knit this, 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 and I'm like, okay. Sometimes I get really into it like it's X number of rows or inches and then I say this is how much time I have or for you this is how much time there is until the test this is how much time I have 
how can I divide this evenly or according to like my days, maybe I give myself less to do on the weekdays, more to do on the weekend, and then I just go for it. So, oh, I think somebody's at the door. Let me see if they knock again. Hmm. Okay, they didn't knock again, so maybe it's just a package, but I'm glad the dogs didn't go crazy. <laughs> like if they had rung the doorbell, they would have gone crazy. Um, but anyway, I think that's my best advice, just Make a plan, divide it up, and stick to it, and always reward yourself. Whatever that looks like for you, do that for yourself. It's very, very important. Last question here from Stinkzilla. Um, she says, hi, Natalie. With my first pair of socks in a decade finished after sock week, I'm wondering about blocking them. I see you block yours, but I have never or haven't ever blocked socks before. I've blocked shawls, and I know that they can grow a lot. If I block my socks on sock blockers, will they grow too much? Right now they fit perfectly and I don't wanna end up with baggy socks. Thoughts? Okay, good question. So a lot of people don't block their socks. That's 100% fine. I do block my socks. I think that they look a lot better um, after you block them and especially if I am putting them away or gifting them, I want them to look nice and even. So the way that I block is I will take the sock, put it in a tub with some water and some soak and let them soak for like 15 to 20 minutes or, you know, if I forget, hours, whatever. <laughs> and then I will put them on these sock blockers. These are from Perfectly Catchy Designs and you can find her on eBay. I get them at a local fiber show, but um, I don't know how to tell you if she's coming to your local fiber show, um, but that's where I get mine from. And then I just slide them on here and they do come in different sizes. So you need to make sure you don't get one that's too big. Now, does it stretch my sock? I guess, but not like I stretch a shawl. Like when I block a shawl, it grows a ton because the stitches are much looser. I may be using fingering weight yarn for this sock and the shawl, but the shawl I use like a size five or six needle, and this is a one. So it doesn't grow quite as much. It does grow a little bit though, but make sure you don't get sock blockers that are too big. Usually it'll say like a small is this foot size, a medium is this foot size. I think I get mediums for most things and it works out just fine. I mean, you can kind of tell pretty quickly when you put it on there if it's too big. So for me, no, it doesn't stretch it out too much. But if you're worried, what I would do is just wash them. You need to wash your knits. <laughs> like you do need to wash knits, in my opinion. Like they're clothes, they need to be washed with soap and hand washing is perfect, perfectly fine. But they need to be washed, especially after you've been knitting on them and it evens out the stitches. Now you don't have to put them on blockers. You could just squeeze them out, lay them flat to dry. They're not going to get stretched as much and then that would be, I think that would be fine. Wearing your socks is going to kind of block them in a way anyway. So if you wash them and they're a little wrinkly and then you wear them, they will kind of get blocked out. So that's what I would do. Um, but in the future, if you want to get some sock blockers, I think that that would also be fine. I don't find that it stretches my socks too much at all. Okay, let's talk about news. So sock week 2020 is over. It was a whirlwind, it went by so fast. I need to look at the numbers again, but I know we had like 400 finished socks in the Ravelry thread, maybe over 400, which is just crazy. We had over a thousand posts on Instagram and that just, that just says like the volume of people who were knitting and crocheting socks, which is, is so, so cool. I was really, really excited this year to see how many people were doing something for the first time, whether it was making socks for the first time or trying new techniques. That's really like the spirit for me of Sock Week is to give yourself a personal challenge and to try something new. Um, I also saw crocheted socks this year, at least like eight to 10, I think, which is really, really cool. So I would love, like personally, my personal goal is to get more crocheters involved next year and get and see more crocheted socks. So that was really, really cool. So sock week is over, all those things are, the threads are closed, everything is closed. If you are just now coming here and you're like, sock week, I would have loved that, I missed it. Don't worry, we're gonna do sock week 2021, it is coming. Um, and you won't have to wait until next year to do some other things 
with socks. <laughs> I have got more things up my sleeve, don't you worry. I'm not gonna make you wait that long. Um, but Sock Week is really, really fun. It's the first make along that I ever did. And yeah, it's a good one. I really, really like it. So that was a lot, a lot, a lot of fun. Now I do have a brand new make along. If you haven't seen it yet, I will make sure to link the video because it's my new video this week too. So let me back up. I did a summer project planning video in May that you guys loved. And so um, I got some requests to do a fall project planning video. So I did a fall project planning video and I don't know, somewhere along the way in one of my lives, we started discussing doing a garment make along. And so I thought, you know what? I'm planning fall projects. It's almost fall, let's combine them. So my new video this week is my fall project planning video, but also an introduction to a new make along. So let's talk about the make along and the video will be linked down below. Um, this is called the fall, hashtag fall garment M-A-L. M-A-L stands for make along. Um, it's a make along because it's for knitters and crocheters. So it's not a cow with a K or a cow with a C, it's a make along. It's, it's a mal, I guess. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's for knitters and crocheters and it is all about garments. It doesn't have to be a fall garment if you wanna bring a summer garment into that that you're working on right now. Totally, totally fine. So this make along is extremely casual. Um, you can have whips, you can make any size sweater that you want. Um, meaning that like if you want to make for babies or kids or dogs, I don't know, whatever you want, that's totally fine. It just needs to be a garment and it needs to be something that is intended to wear. So no like tiny ornament sweaters or anything like that. Something for yourself or another human or anim living thing to wear. <laughs> um, if you have questions, ask me. But I've got all the information, all the details linked down below and it's also in that video. Um, so here's the way that the make along works. We're starting this Friday, August 21st. And again, whips count. So you don't need to scramble and rush to find something new to cast on. You can start whenever you want. It's also not a um, finish it kind of a make along. Um, so you, again, you're not required to start on the date and you're not required to end by any kind of date. You're, the only requirement is that you're working on a garment. So it's gonna be a three month make along from August 21st, this Friday, to November 20th. And I don't know what day of the week November 20th is, um, but it's three months long, but we're doing it in three different segments. So every single month, starting on the 21st, I'm going to release a video on Instagram talking about prizes. I've got all kinds of amazing prizes, um, yarny goodness for this make along. Thank you all the amazing people who are sponsoring. I'm so excited to share that with you guys, um, but I will announce the prizes for that month and then all month long. And again, this is the 21st of the month. So August 21st to September 20th is the first installment. You can enter. You enter by chatting on Ravelry. There will be a thread just for that month installment. And then also using the hashtag on Instagram. Instagram posts are dated, so it'll be really easy for me to see where one month starts and one a next month starts. So don't worry about that. Just make sure that your Instagram feed is public so that I can see it and that you use the hashtag. Um, so yeah, so I will announce prizes and then I'll say which ones are for Instagram, which ones are for Ravelry. You'll have all month to just be working, just basically have a whip that's a garment and participate, chat and post and you're entered to win. It's that easy. Um, and so I will pick uh, randomly, draw the prizes at the end of the month and then we'll start it over again with a new month. So then on September 21st, I will have another video with all new prizes and everything. So I'm really excited, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Again, it's three months long, so it's gonna be a really good time to encourage each other to work on garments for the fall and winter months. So it's gonna be a lot of fun, I'm really excited. All of this, all of these ideas came from you guys, so continue to give me your brilliant ideas I really love them and appreciate them. I think that really is it for news. I don't have any plans right now for um, any more live videos. I already had two live videos this month, but I might do another one at the end of the month here on YouTube, maybe. I'm not sure yet. It just depends because I, I did do those other ones like right back to back. We'll see how the weeks are looking here when we get towards the end of the month. But just as a reminder, 
I do plan to have a YouTube video and an Instagram video that are live every single month. Okay, let's talk about life. I'm stretching. Oh, um, so this week is an interesting week, honestly. Um, everyone has left me and gone on vacation. My mother-in-law has gone to Yellowstone, which was really, really cool, um, driving around, looking at all of that kind of stuff. So we have her dog here, and her dog is Toaster's best friend. He just loves her dog. And he actually spent all last week at my mother-in-law's and never came home. Like we dropped him off on Sunday, and we didn't get him back till the following Sunday <laughs> when we brought her dog back with us. So, um, and then in addition to that, my husband, Kent, is gone this week. He will be back by the time this video posts. So yeah, I, it's, I feel safe to say that. <laughs> I have an alarm system, don't even try it. Um, but he is with a friend at, the, uh, at his lake house and they're having like a boys work at the lake week, I don't know. I don't know what boys do. <laughs> Work at the lake week, so they both have remote jobs anyway. So they're working out there and enjoying the lake and watching hockey. And yeah, so I have the house to myself with two dogs. Um, and so for me, it's a, that's kind of a, a vacation a little bit. Like I can just be a little more relaxed because I like being alone. Like this is a long time for me, not gonna lie. But I like being alone because it just takes down for me, the expectations a little bit. Um, and I don't have to worry about like, okay, somebody else is gonna say like, oh, do you wanna go do something? And I know that sounds really crazy. Some of you are like, what? That is so weird. And some of you that are like married and are introverts are like, I understand. <laughs> You're like, I totally get it. It's it totally, being alone in the house is like amazing. So anyway, I miss my husband. I do, I promise. but. It is a little nice because now I can be like, all right, this is my plan today and I can just like knock it out. Like I'm gonna get videos done for this channel and for my other channel. I can just like work when I, when I want to. I don't have to worry about like, oh, is somebody else hungry? Or like, is, is somebody gonna wanna go do something outside of the house? I can just like execute and I don't know. I don't know if I'm explaining that very well, but I, what I'm trying to say is I'm enjoying my time alone and I very much appreciate it. And I will also be very happy when my husband comes back home because I will be lonely <laughs> for a little while. Um, but yeah, so that's what's going on this week. I am watching Indian matchmaking on Netflix in case you're interested if you're looking for a show and I am very much enjoying it. I was just watching it during lunch. Um, okay, so bringing me joy this week is taking things slow. I know I just talked about getting stuff done. So you're like, wait, what? But I am really trying as of yesterday, because yesterday I woke up just feeling extremely anxious. And a lot of you last week were telling me, Natalie, slow down. You're, you just need to remember to take time. And that is so true. And I realized that with work starting back, I had stopped taking little parts of my day, like even lunchtime. I wasn't taking time to stop, to knit for a little bit, watch a TV show. And I really need that. Maybe you don't, but I really truly do need that. So this morning I got up and I listened to a podcast and I knit for a little bit um, before diving into work. And you know what? It made me work more efficiently. It made me able to like start and really dive into things. I also took that time during lunch today and I'm just realizing that that is what I need. I need a slower pace. I need to carve out time, take time to do those things. Even if it means that now, I'm probably going to have to work an hour later in the day than I really wanted to, but that's okay because I got the time and now, I don't know, maybe it's even reflecting in this podcast that I'm able to just kind of like ease into it and relax a little bit more. So that's what's bringing me joy this week as, as well as these cute little headbands. I love them, um, but yeah, so I'm excited to work on these projects, get them wrapped up so that fall can officially start for me September 1st, even though the make-along starts on Friday. So maybe I will start something on Friday or maybe, no, I won't. I will not start something on Friday, don't let me. I will work on this, as I hit myself in the face. I will work on this and finish this and then 
sometime in September, <laughs> I will start my next project. So go check out the fall project planning video to learn more about the make along and also see what projects I'm thinking about for fall. Okay, that's everything today. Thanks for letting me ramble. As always, it was lots of fun getting to chat with you and I will see you next week. I believe it is time for my stash video. So be looking for that on Tuesday. All right guys, see you in the next one. Bye.